Hey up everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I wanted to talk a little bit about realism art. If you're a regular to my channel you'll know that my focus is realism, especially when I'm working in acrylic, as realistic as possible really, because that's what my clients want and expect of me when I'm doing pet portraits. And it's also a style that I've always really enjoyed doing and I've strived to be good at. Right from being back when I was a little kid I've always wanted to be able to paint like this. But I've been thinking about doing a video talking about this for quite a while because I see a lot of negative attitude towards realism art, you know, on internet and what have you, in art groups and forums and things like that. And it seems to be getting worse lately, so I decided now we're a good time to do a video talking about realism art and whether it's actually real art or not. I'm going to be stating my opinions quite bluntly in the typical Yorkshire style of Yorkshire woman that I am, so if you're of nervous disposition then you might not want to listen to this video. But before I get started on that I just wanted to say a little bit about what it is I'll be painting through this video. This is Daz, he's a border collie and he belongs to a friend of mine who commissioned a painting of him later on last year because obviously we're in a waiting list. I finally got it done beginning of this year so he's in his new home now. She's already had a few other portraits done prior to this one but Daz is her latest and youngest dog so now he's grown up into an adult dog she decided to have his portrait done along with others. It was painted using the usual acrylics on Fabriano Art Deco Hot Press £300 and I were mostly using Winsor & Newton, a bit of Liquitex and brushes I'm not that fussy but most watercolour type brushes and things like that will do. I like the Winsor & Newton Cotman for example. Right so now that I've explained what I'm painting and my equipment and everything let's get back to why realism art is art and it's just as much real art as any other style of art. First argument that the naysayers come out with is that you may as well just take a photo. Now, the reason I don't believe this is because as a photographer and an artist, creating photography and creating artwork, even photorealistic artwork, it just doesn't hit the same spot inside you as a creator. It's just a completely different thing that you get out of it as a creator. From perspective of a client, I asked the lady that I did this actual painting for what her perspective of it was. I mean, if you look at the reference photo in the bottom corner, I took that reference photo when I saw her to show last year. So I took that with my camera. Now, she could have just had that blown up into a big canvas and not even bothered paying for a painting, but that's exactly what she did. And I asked her why. And this is what she said word for word. The depth of the painting, the soul of my dog that I can see in his eyes. Every stroke of your brushes can be seen. Then that portrays my dog not just a digital photo. I have professional digital photos done before, which are lovely, but there is not the character and the personality that one of your paintings delivers. And I've asked a few other clients who've passed as well, and I get similar answers from them. They just think that a painting is just totally different to a photo. Even though I've taken the reference photo myself as well, they could have just bought that from me. They didn't, they paid a lot more money and they had a painting done because to them, it's different. Just like to me, it is different. Not only that, but as a photographer, if you think that the only style you can do in photography is realism, then you don't really know a lot about photography because you can do abstract, you can do surrealism, you can do impressionism, you can do every style you can think of in photography. So if doing realism art is not real art because you might as well take a photo, then same logic must apply to all other styles. You may as well just stop art completely because you can do all different styles using photography. And especially now with digital photography, when you can just put things up in Photoshop and alter them even more. But even in camera, changing your settings and what have you, you can create all different styles, not just realism where you can see everything as you see it in real life. I mean, photography is an art form in itself, but it's just not the same as art in any style, even realistic art, even photorealistic art. It's just not the same. It's not the same for the creator when they're creating it, and it's not the same for the people that are collecting it. Now, a lot of the things that I've seen where people have been speaking about realism art like it's not real art or questioning whether it's real art is in pet portrait groups, which I think is a bit daft because... When you speak to people that purchase pet portraits, you know, your pet owners and what have you, the vast majority of them want realistic style because that's just what they prefer. It's, it's how they see their dog in real life. They want something that most resembles what they see when they actually look at their pet in real life. 
I mean, you get exceptions. You, you get people that do like other styles, you know, some a little bit more stylized, a bit loose or impressionist because it's a bit different. But realism is definitely probably the most popular style in pet portraiture because that's just what most Joe public want. And whether they know a lot about art or not, a lot of them perceive it as being the more realistic it is, the better it is. I mean, that's not my view. I would just want to reiterate that that is not my view, that the more realistic it is, the better it is. But that's how a lot of Joe public feel about it. So end of day, that's the people that we're serving. That's what style they want. So I think people popping up in pet portrait groups and denouncing realism, it's a little bit rude, to be honest, because that makes up a large part of market for realism art is pet portraiture because that's what pet owners want and you get a lot of realist artists in these groups as a result so when people are saying things like that you know they're just insulting an old massive section of artists in that group and they know what they're doing and then they pretend that they're not doing that but basically they are they're saying it's not real art and I'm quite sure they wouldn't like it if someone came along and told them that their preferred style is not real art. So if they wouldn't want to take it, then they shouldn't dish it, in my opinion. Now, the next point I want to make is where things are going to get quite blunt. Now, these are actual observations that I've made. I'm not making things up. This is what I have witnessed. And that is most of the people that are denouncing realistic art, their artwork itself is just not that good. It's not like it's a good example of a loose impressionist style. It looks to me a lot of the time, it looks quite amateur and it looks to me most of the time like like they've tried to make it realistic but they're still in the very early beginner stages so they've just not reached that point yet and they've still got quite a bit of a way to go before they do reach that point. So it seems to me like they're aware of their own limitations and a little bit of sour grape syndrome comes in. So because they can't achieve the realism, maybe ever or maybe not as quick as they want to, they'll start dragging it down instead just to make themselves feel better. Because I find the people that do looser styles and are really good at it, they just don't really do that. They don't pull down realistic art because they're confident in what they do. They've got their own audience that loves what they do, including people like me. And they just get on with what they're doing and they're not too focused on blathering on about what other people are doing and attempting to discourage anybody else from doing realism just because they don't approve of it. And I think a mistake that a lot of people make when they're starting out is that they think that in order to be a good artist, like a lot of your joy public things, they've got to be realistic. But realism's just not for everybody. It's just not for every artist. And it might not be for you. And if it's not for you, then just concentrate on making it better in a direction that you prefer to go in. You don't need to be more realistic to be better. You can get better in any style. And then once you're proficient in your style, you don't need to feel jealous or threatened by another style. Because basically, if you keep denouncing realistic art like that, that's basically what you are. You're feeling threatened and you're feeling envious and jealous. And if you concentrate on improving your artwork in the style that you prefer to do, then you'll not feel that anymore. So that is what you need to do if you're one of them people. Another thing that they like to say is that all realistic art looks exactly the same. Now, if you do think that, then your eyes must be painted on because I can look at any realistic art by numerous different artists and I can tell them apart even without seeing a name on them because they all look different to me. They've all got that artist's personal stamp on work. And I've got more news for you, even when it comes to other styles. You're not as unique as what you think you are. There's loads of artists who do a painterly watercolour style or a sketchy style or a painterly acrylic or oil style. If there's any style that you can see, no matter how loose or abstract or anything, there's another artist out there, well, there's loads of other artists out there that's doing something very similar, putting strokes down in pretty much the same way as you are. So you're not as unique as what you think you are. There's still loads of people doing pretty much exactly what you are. So your works look just as similar to each other as what realists' artwork looks to each other. And last point I want to make is when they try to make out that realism art just means slavishly copying a photograph and having no originality or imagination or anything like that. And all I can say to that is if, if that's what you think, then you've never been any good at realism. You've never really done it and you've never been any good at it. Because I know as a realist artist that it's not just about slavishly copying a photograph. I have to quite often deviate quite strongly away from photographs that I'm using as references because what might even work as a photo, and sometimes the photo's not even that good, it doesn't necessarily mean that it'll work well as a painting. 
Sometimes you have exposure issues in photographs so you can get really dark areas that have lost all the detail and blown out areas that have lost all the detail. So then you've got to improvise and add some detail into these places that you can't see in photograph and that means using your artistic license and your imagination to decide what kind of detail should be in these places. And I've gone so far as to even completely change the kind of lighting that's going on from being a bright, normal, middle of day kind of light to a really sort of extreme, what they call chiaroscuro kind of lighting effect for something a bit more dramatic. I have to work from numerous photos for the same painting quite often where you're taking different subjects from different photos, putting them all together, putting them in front of different backgrounds, putting them in different settings. I've even had to do it where I've taken a head from one animal in one photo and attached it to a body of another animal in another photo and put it in front of a background where I mostly had to make the background up and all that kind of thing. And as for hair texture and texture like grasses and things like that, you don't try to make every strand of hair or every blade of grass exactly the same as it is in photo. I mean, I'm often mentioning this in my tutorials anyway. There's no point trying to make it exactly the same as it is in photo because it'll just look stiff and lifeless, so you just need to familiarise yourself with that texture and then just put it onto your canvas, your paper, whatever you're working on. Just using that knowledge rather than slavishly copying photograph and doing every strand and what have you exactly the same way that it is in photo. If you look at this painting I'm doing now, the, the, that little wet patch under his chin up front of his neck, his hair's gone a little bit spiky there where, it's, where it were a little bit wet and I didn't paint them exactly the same as they are in photo, I can tell you that now. So they'll be quite different if you scrutinised it, be quite different. So bottom line is, can we please stop trying to reduce variety in art world by trying to get rid of styles that are not your personal cup of tea? And can you also respect the wishes of people that want to create and collect artwork that's in a style that's not your cup of tea? And I'm now running out of video, so I'm going to have to end my rant here. So if you enjoyed the video, please get a like and maybe add your own opinion to comments. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!